With Hurricane Helena expected to become a strong Category 3 storm, Governor DeSantis is reminding people of the dangers that come with a storm of this magnitude, including trees around your home. If you're sheltering at your home, be aware of the tree limbs that are on your property or, in, or adjacent to your home. Try to be in an interior room or away from limbs that could fall through the roof or window and cause harm. And we do see fatalities that happen in these storms because of tree limbs falling on homes. And you can have a, a, a great home that can withstand a Category 3 storm winds. Uh, it's a lot more difficult to withstand uh, a big tree falling uh, on your roof. So, so take a look at that and know that that is a very real, ha real hazard when it comes to this storm. Other big concern, people driving around or looking around after the storm or during the storm. He's telling people to stay in place because there could be dangerous conditions on the roads that you can't always see, including downed power lines and standing water that might be deeper than you think. All right, let's take a live look at our Launch Credit Union port cam at Port Canaveral. Mm -hmm. Just look at how heavy the winds are blowing there. Uh, this is near... What is it called? Observation? Exploration, Exploration Tower. Exploration Tower there. Mm -hmm. We saw some rain on and off in the past couple of hours. Chief Meteorologist Candace Campos is here tracking the latest on Helene. And Brevard County, Volusia County both had tornado warnings earlier this morning. And of course, we're going to continue to watch the potential and the threat for tornadoes in the forecast. So even though this system is not a land falling storm for us here in Central Florida, it certainly will along the panhandle to see it sheer size of the system still means that here in Central Florida, we will be feeling uh, many effects. A lot of those tropical storm force wind gusts that we are already seeing on that live picture there at the Cape. All right, this is the latest stats as of 11 a.m. It's an overall complete brand new update has sustained winds of 105 miles per hour, upping it slightly from the 8 a.m. intermediate advisory. This system continues to wobble just a little bit, but as of now, the National Hurricane Center is keeping the cone relatively unchanged, maybe even narrowing a little bit, but I do want to show you again the sheer size of this from the center of Helene outward. It stretches about 345 miles. So even here in central Florida, that's the reason why we do have those tropical storm warnings in effect, because as it continues to gain strength as possibly a major hurricane before making landfall, the uh, concern will be on the right side of that storm. So that includes pretty much most of central Florida and of course the west coast of Florida as well. That forecast cone has narrowed a little bit. It is now keeping Apalachicola out of the forecast cone. Again, the cone basically just tells us where we think the center of Helene will go. Of course, the effects will be felt, again, for many miles out from the center. So the cone primarily hovering over Carabelle and Perry at this hour. We, of course, will watch for the next forecast cone update that will be coming down at about five o'clock this afternoon. All right, let's look at the radar. We had a lot of rain in a short amount of time as the first of a couple of squall lines already moved into central Florida. As of right now, there is a lull. We got a lot of reporters out there talking about how the sun is shining and how the skies are clear. That's a concern for us because the moment we start heating up our atmosphere, destabilizing our atmosphere, you can see there is that little stretch between some of the squall lines that we're starting to see some of those breaks in the clouds. That is concerning because if we start juicing up our atmosphere, adding heat to the mix on already a very unstable atmosphere, that certainly will be a concern for more of a, that tornadic um, activity on the radar. Tornado watch as of now still in effect for all of Central Florida because of all the conditions there. They run between 8 and then 10 o'clock for you there in Flagler County. But before we get to your breakdown here, let's first bring in meteorologist Samir, uh, Julie Broughton. I forget who's here. We have all of us here right now uh, really breaking down the timing and those impacts county by county. Yeah, we are all here and we'll all be here with you throughout the day already feeling some of those impacts just about everywhere in Central Florida. Let's take a look. This is our Light Orlando Delivering Hope Together camera over downtown Orlando and you can see seeing a break in some of those clouds and as Candace just said we do not want to see sunshine out there today that just adds fuel to an already unstable atmosphere 82 degrees right now in downtown Orlando but notice the winds they're gusting to around 23 miles per hour temperature wise elsewhere we're looking at 86 in Mico 86 in Melbourne 81 right now if you are in the villages now look at the winds earlier during that tornado warning we did have a wind gust of 41 miles per 
hour in Cocoa. We're looking at winds in New Smyrna Beach gusting to 37 miles per hour right now. 30 mile per hour gusts in Ocala and winds are gusting at 34 miles per hour right now in Brevard County. It will continue to get windier, especially as we head through the next couple of hours. And I think at times we will all be dealing with tropical storm force wind gusts. Here's a look at our wind gust forecast on the model data. We start the clock for you right there at noon. We keep rolling through the afternoon hours, stopping the clock at four o'clock. Notice Brevard County, Cape Canaveral, Cocoa Beach, looking at wind gusts in the 40s, up to almost 50 miles per hour at Cocoa Beach by eight o'clock. And notice as we look out over the Gulf, that is when Helene will be making its closest pass to the Gulf Coast. So areas like Marion County, you could see winds gusting up close to 70 miles per hour at times. And again, a concern throughout the day will be those isolated tornadoes. Let's take you county by county for those impacts now starting with Marion, Lake and Sumter counties. On average, two to four inches of rain total. Some spots could see up to six inches. Again, you could see winds gusting, especially west of I-75, close to 70 miles per hour with a few tornadoes possible. Orange, Seminole, Osceola counties also looking at winds gusting around 50 miles per hour with isolated tornadoes. Then taking you to our coastal counties, Flagler, Volusia and Brevard counties, winds gusting close to 50 miles per hour with that threat of isolated tornadoes. Candace, this is something we will all be here throughout the day watching. And once again, the timing is really going to increase uh, that threat and the likelihood for strong to severe storms, the strongest winds, as we were showing you there on the maps, will really come in after about four or five o'clock. You can see the bulk of the moisture will be streaming in across central Florida. And again, if we get a little bit of that sunshine, some of these rain bands could certainly quickly spark up those strong to severe storms. Of course, Helene continued to make its way onshore by as late as nine o'clock, but we are still be dealing with some of those uh, heavy tropical downpours even as late as about midnight for tonight. Again, the worst of the weather will be late this afternoon and into early evening. Now let's check on that hour by hour forecast for today. Sponsored by Strata Air Conditioning and Heating. AC emergency? You ought to call Strata. It's obviously a pretty much guaranteed chance for rain. Temperatures could warm up into those upper 80s before we get that squall line back in. Of course, weather impact day. The News 6 weather team will be here all throughout the day and the night on air. And of course, click Orlando.com and News 6 Plus. Back to you guys. All right, Candace, Justin Universal canceling tonight's Halloween Horror Nights event. The parks, though, will remain open and closed during their normal times. 